Hi and hello everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Melanie Martinez album, Portals. This is the third full-length LP from pop singer and songwriter Miss Melanie Martinez, coming through with a sort of an artistic evolution on this one over here, as you can see from uh, the title. She's kind of done with the weird child Lolita, I'm a baby now, uh, aesthetic that sh she's usually known for, which was always kind of low-key weird, to be honest. But now instead what we're getting is Melanie Martinez uh, sort of killing off this cry baby vessel and moving instead into some sort of like weird alien being form from another world or galaxy or dimension. To be honest, the character on the front cover looks like something from a kid's show that got canceled in the pilot stage because it scared the children viewers shitless. And to be honest, some of the uh, visual promo material uh, watching, you know, Melanie Martinez become th this this thing here scares me shitless. But still, I put on my big, brave, big boy, brave boy, big pants, and I listened to this record despite the fear. I went onto the internet, onto streaming services, I looked up portals, and the album that came up is the album that I listened to, and that is this album that I will be reviewing if you look up Portals on the internet, album Portals music, uh, you'll find this album too. And here are my thoughts on that album, which kicks off with a really interesting uh, opening track of Matter, which is quite long. It's 14 minutes long, which is not only very lengthy for a Melanie Martinez track, but also Melanie has seemingly switched up her styles uh, her style of music, which I guess in a sense is understandable with such uh, a bold visual change, but I didn't expect Melanie Martinez to go from making like low grade, basic uh, alt pop that has, I guess, kind of, you know, a, a slight goth twist maybe, to uh, making literal like gent, like progressive metal. Uh, but, but that's what we have. And I guess apparently Melanie Martinez uh, did everything on this herself, um, you know, looking at the credits of the record, but uh, but yeah, she's doing drums, riffs, vocals, even though her singing sounds way different this time around, because on this track over here, this opening track, she kind of sounds like uh, she's doing like a Maynard of Tool impression. But yeah, like a lot of Gent, the uh, riffs are very rigid and somewhat mechanical. They kind of sound like an inkjet printer, uh, printing really aggressively. And toward the end, there are some passages that sound sort of like a, a Mars Volta performance, but with little to no dynamics to it. But yeah, very lengthy and very odd introduction for a Melanie Martinez uh, record, and believe it or not, like, these gent vibes continue throughout the album. We have the following King, which I noted is sounding like automated Steely Dan if Melanie was performing with a team of Lego Bionicles with no soul, trying to execute the most precise robot metal possible. And toward the end, I suppose there are some riffs and scream vocals that are a tad bit deaf tonesy. Now for this next track, Concealing Fate Part 1, 2, and 3, Melanie Martinez is really going to blow away the gent fan because this track kind of sounds like a Meshuga tribute in a way, but if the band's songs were written by self-driving AI, the riffs are so heavy, but yet I believe that Melanie Martinez didn't even down-tune the guitars on this record. However, my biggest issue with this track is that it's in three parts, and in my opinion, I, I just don't know why that's the case. Concealing fate just kind of seems like a one-part job to me. If you can't conceal fate in one single part, you shouldn't conceal it at all. At least that's what my grandfather taught me. We've gone soft as a society participation trophies have ruined everything. Meanwhile, the fourth track on the LP, Tourniquet, sounds like really bad porcupine tree, with Steven Wilson waking up out of the Matrix, looking around and essentially saying, fuck this, and going back in. There's a cool little groove session toward the end of the track that proves that Gent can get funky too. Uh, for sure. The next two-part track on the record is really interesting, a creative one from Melanie, where she's kind of caterwauling over uh, this atmospheric production before we get these riff passages, which sound like three-story power drills, all just like at, at the same time, and also tipping over and knocking down very high-voltage power lines. Uh, for some reason on this track, I also get the sense that Melanie Martinez, when she was writing and producing these songs, um, she was she was watching a lot of Vsauce videos. I don't know why I get that sense, but it's it's just a hunch. But in the second half of the track, which I hate, uh, mirror image. Uh, this track, for whatever reason, is not a mirror image of 
all the music we've heard so far, so that's just false advertising. So I'm knocking a point off the final score of the record because I don't like being lied to. On the sixth cut to this thing, Orbital, we have a very epic vocal and uh, kind of, you know, glossy guitar ambient interlude, and I love albums that feature those on the sixth track, and this one is especially guitar and especially ambient and especially interlude. The following Juno does have some really epic riffs on it, but um, as good as the song is, I just don't really see how this connects to the classic Michael Sarah and Elliot Page film. I mean, knowing Melanie Martinez's style and aesthetic and uh, songwriting, I could see why she would personally be a fan of the movie, but again, it's not really uh, dove into that deeply in this song and why she thought that like, you know, gent music and progressive metal was like the best way to uh, tribute it, I, I just have no idea. Track nine on the record, Phoenix does feature, uh, in my opinion, a bit of Pink Floyd worship. And honestly, I, I think Melanie Martinez isn't really the best at kind of channeling this uh, vibe this energy as much as she may uh, love classic progressive rock. Oh, and on top of it, I forgot to mention track eight on the record, mostly because during that track, I didn't really listen to it because I had to go to the bathroom, um, so I was out of the room while the song was playing, but I believe pausing an album is bad luck, and uh, r rarely do I end up having a good review and a good experience with music when I pause it at some point, so I just kind of like let it roll. Then track 11, finally on the project Nocturne, um, I thought was handily the worst record on portals because when I played it, it literally opened up an interdimensional portal that brought me to this timeline. Um, here's the me that was already in this timeline prior to me arriving here. And this uh, version of the reality I come from honestly sucks. I mean, you guys don't have free college. Uh, my channel had 10 million more subscribers than it does now, apparently. And on top of it, Kanye was a Nazi until he saw a Jonah Hill film. What is wrong with you guys? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty upset with this record, TBH. Um, not really feeling the vibe on this one. Um, hopefully I can make it back to where I come from sooner rather than later because this is, uh, this is hell on earth. Um, I'm, uh, feeling... Bad. Feeling pretty bad. Just don't feel very good. Just haven't been a lot of reasons to smile lately. Tran. Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano. Melody Martinez. Portals. Forever.